Closed buildings and boarded up windows have long been depressing sites in some of the nation's urban areas. But recently, some saw that blight in a whole new way as a giant canvas that could be used to bring important messages to the community. They enlisted the help of local artists to deliver vital health information related to the COVID-19 pandemic. And most recently, they watched as America's latest crisis became another source of urgent artistic expression. I like this one better because you're looking out for yourself and others. I love that. Community activists Arnetta Curry and Mark Strandquist broke in a new campaign message. There we go. When COVID-19 broke out. Thank you, Jesus. In North Philadelphia. Partnering with other members in the 37th Ward, they're spreading messages they find are helpful to their neighbors. Messages of survival. The message needed now is trust what you're hearing because it's real. And folks don't trust. They're hearing conflicting versions of what this is, and it's so simple. This cobalt is serious. Curry knows just how serious. I mean, this is close to home for you. Very close, very close. The end of March, my sister had contracted it. She was in a coma for four weeks. That's as long as we had her, and we lost her. Fill the walls with hope is Strandquist's answer, a way to bring informative, possibly even life-saving images to businesses shuttered by the pandemic. As an artist, a boarded-up business could also be a blank canvas because it's one of the rare and unique mediums where we can literally dream of a world that doesn't exist. This art, this is a gesture. This is not the solution. It's one of many things that all of us can be doing in this moment to help each other out. The project can be seen here at the Village of Arts and Humanities, a community center serving the Germantown neighborhood. This neighborhood, which is incredibly disinvested for over a half century, they know how important it is to get positive, hopeful, and also informative material out to the public. And Avila Capus runs the center, which now provides a unique view. We wanted to make sure that the environment that people were coming into was one that was filled with color and filled with positive messages and looked more like a gallery than a uh, you know social service center. Created by a diversity of artists, these posters, yard signs, banners, and decals aren't just going up here, but all across Philadelphia. At City Hall, 10,000 people a week line up by decal spaced six feet apart to collect meals during the crisis. We're the largest program of its kind anywhere, I think, in the world. The That's really start. great. Jane Golden runs Mural Arts Philadelphia and funded this project because it coalesced with some of her own. You know what? Here's the thing about COVID. It is shining a light on issues that existed before COVID. For more than 30 years, she's listened for ways to fill that need through her mission. The fact that you placed the mural right next to a hand washing. When we got the call from the Broad Street Ministry, they said we want to do hand washing stations, but we want to call attention to the hand washing station. We want to have art behind the station. So we were like, oh, that's such a brilliant idea. But just as people were solving one problem, no the justice. world changed. No justice. COVID-19 took a back seat to the anger and outrage over the killing of George Floyd and so many others. But something else also emerged. New messages, a new visual expression, and down came murals of the past that had already been deemed divisive. The Frank Rizzo piece. I mean, the prominent Rizzo likeness of a former mayor, some say, turned a blind eye to police brutality. For us, public art is about unity. It's bringing people together. So it, it had to go. We have to really listen to what's going on, talk to activists and artists, making sure we create platforms for black artists, artists of color, like more than we were doing, like do it with more intention. But in Germantown, the same morning we returned two months later, half a block away from the village, buildings were ablaze. No protesters in sight. 
these businesses may never open again. It's our neighborhood. And yep, we have, to, we have to do the best we can. And for residents like Arnetta Curry, that's changed the scope of her mission. And like this whole mural project, this whole notion of trying to get a message out to stay safe, where is that gone? And pockets is still there. And the protests. The protests served a lot of things. An avenue to release, a coverage to cover you up where you wouldn't be out in the open. For this protest to travel around the world, that means something. I've seen this before. I've seen change happen. I'm praying that it sticks this time. So, so privileged to have been able to see this conversation happening in real time. Often we watch it after the fact. So glad we had a chance to go back and revisit that community and, and see what they were doing as this next step occurred. And Michelle, it's a little thing, but the power of art and those messages, you may not even realize it as you're taking it in, but really a beautiful story and a wonderful way to try to get some of those messages out. It's a personal baseball card.